Hello again, this is Tom O'Connor of Advanced Discovery. We're here at the University of Florida Law School eDiscovery Project Story Booth. I got it right, because this time I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> we are, of course, at the uh, law school's uh, eDiscovery conference, the fifth annual conference, and I am here with my old friend, um, old friend? Uh, My old let me, friend. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I resemble that <laughs> Not, remark. Neither one of us are old. Um, Mary and I have known each other for a number of years. Mary Mack, director, is that the correct title? Director oh, yeah. Yeah. of, uh, of ACEDS, uh, which uh, I'm sure as many of you know is the premier certification organization in the e-discovery space. Mary's also speaking mm -hmm. at the conference, uh, and so we thought we'd uh, have a few words with her about what's going on. What do you think? is going on in e-discovery, Mary. What's the, as I said earlier, what's the, what's the 40,000 foot view of where we're at in our, in our space? You and I, of course, have seen the ups and downs. <laughs> the, the ups and downs, you better believe it. Yeah. And it, so we were, when we started, e-discovery was going like this. It was just expanding by leaps and bounds. Right. And so 2006, things just got bigger, the definition of BSI, incorporating everything in the and, kitchen sink. And I should say for bigger. those who don't know us, we were both in the Pacific Northwest, which seemed to be the little startup bubble for yeah. e-discovery back then. I don't know why, because people don't sue each other there so much, it's but really we sure kind of did have a lot of e-discovery. Right? Absolutely, but then in uh, uh, as everything expanded the costs got astronomical and then the move was to start reducing scope of, of e-discovery so we had the 2015 rules so that has that has moved I think the the pendulum into more proportional uh, uh, types of things and proportionality means reports reports means oh my goodness maths so one of the things that's happening is that our uh, our lovely profession that many of us are liberal arts folks are learning how to do some maths and learning a little bit about the technology. Um, Florida here uh, has technology CLE requirements right. for their practicing attorneys, right. uh, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. So the other thing that's happening uh, in my view is that we no longer have that free ticket. You used to be able to go into an organization and say, oh my goodness, you've got a, a huge lawsuit and walk out with a hard drive uh, to process uh, uh, data. And you circumvented most of the security uh, that was in place at that time. Right. That no longer happens. It hasn't been happening now for a couple of years, especially in the regulated industry. So I think we're gonna see more, uh, more security. Uh, as a matter of fact, I passed my uh, CISSP last Friday. Oh, congratulations. And it, and it was all based on my, you know, long time ago working in IT for 20 years. Right. I, I probably could have taken that thing 20 years ago, but, <laughs> but I was a little intimidated by that test. But uh -huh. I took it, passed it, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be helping our SEDS community get more security-wise. Okay. Yeah. So that's definitely a, a trend that you're seeing. It's not just talking about it, but more certification more qualifications in that arena as well. More more qualifications in the arena. Um, there's a new law, you probably, or the rule of 902 that Judge Grimm uh, was very influential in writing about qualified persons being able to uh, validate collections that are made for self-authenticating ESI. Sort of unclog the courts from experts and on the to be simple clear, that's stuff. Federal rules of evidence, not civil procedure. Oh, you're right. right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I uh, not FRCP, FRE. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. Thank you very much. See, this is why we have friends. <laughs> 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 that we we mix up our FRs and then someone will help us. <laughs> it's a very good thing. So uh, I'm curious about that though. Um, and one of the students here yesterday asked us uh, about this, which is the somewhat merging of, as you said, what has been traditionally an IT function and the law. And the law students, of course, are very interested in where that's going more and more of that, you think? Oh, I think they are interested. And so there's, there's, uh, there's some skills missing because the skills to run your own computer, run your own iPhone or Android or whatever are a little different than the skills uh, you need inside a large organization that, that, that's, that's, right. that's handling data. But the, the converse is also true. The IT folks are getting quite interested in the domain of law. So right. you're seeing more masters of uh, law. Not, not so much law school. 
uh, you know, like in terms yeah. of JD, yeah. <laughs> three Not years. Not so much law school <laughs> with that technical what, stuff. Yeah, but but the but the master's uh, right. a degree or certificates or things of that nature. And we're doing a lot more training of IT folks. Oh, interesting. In, in okay. this in our functional domain. So that segues to the to the other question I had, which is where is Ace Heads going? Mm -hmm. um, what preliminary to that? What got you? involved here at the conference. And oh, who, what got any of us involved here at the conference? That's uh, Professor Bill Hamilton, <laughs> as the students say. Right. Professor Bill came to my class and invited us to come to the e-discovery conference. Well, Professor Bill got on the phone. And Professor said, Bill at Legal Tech. Professor Bill is all over the country, all over the world, inviting e-discovery uh, professionals like Tom, myself, Craig Ball, Ralph Losey, right. um, the Gator alumni, of which there are many, Oregon and Canaan and yes. all, all of them to come and converge here and to give his students a leg up in the e-discovery uh, arena. And we're okay. just pleased to work with Bill to do that. Good. So the last question I have is one, as I prefaced our discussion, the trick question we're asking here. Oh, no. It's not really a trick question. We're just not. You already tricked me on the FREs. Yeah. If you could have one superpower in e-discovery an e-discovery superpower, what would it be? All right, I'm, I'm going to choose a really arcane one. My superpower would be to make the create date on files really the first time that the file ever appeared. What would you call that? <laughs> what would you call the superpower person, the superhero who had that power? <laughs> What would that X man be called? That would be the hyper qualified person the for, hyper -qualified. for for Judge Grimm's 902. <laughs> That'd be hard to fit on a T-shirt, though. I don't know. We're gonna have to come up with a better. Oh, uh, all right. Mary, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to, you to see you. Hope to see you in New Orleans sometime in the near future. Yeah, next conference. I'm there. All right. All right. Thanks Thank so much. You.